Hey y'all and welcome back. I'm so happy you're here. I hope you've had an amazing week. So we're going to get started with our devotional. We're I'm almost winding down y'all on this one, but I have another one that I'm, I plan on, but you know, the Lord may change that. So we'll just cross that bridge when we get there, right? <laughs> but we're going to be reading Five Minutes with Jesus, Quiet Time for Your Soul by Sheila Walsh with Sherry Craig. And today's title is When the Lights Go Out. So I'm excited to hear what God has for us. I think one of God's greatest mercies to us is this. Each and every day, the sun sets. This gift is more difficult to recognize now that, than it was a couple hundred years ago. Back then, before the invention of modern lighting, the day was done at sunset. It was a time to put work away until the next day. Time to make peace with all the tasks left undone and any mi mistakes made. In the 21st century, though, we can delay that process. We extend the working hours late into the night, and we let flickering screens make us numb to any dis disappointments from the day. But eventually, the lights do go out. I hope with all of my heart that those moments are peaceful for you, but I know that's not always the case. Is there something that troubles you when the lights go out? Mistakes you have made. Items on your to-do list left undone. A broken heart. Worries. Fear. I understand. I have been in each of those places too. But here's what I have discovered. Those long nights, those long night hours are transformed when I turn to the presence of God, of my God, of my God who loves me. There I find every mistake I have made and every regret that haunts me swallowed up in the ocean of his endless grace. My not enough is no match for God's awesome power. And he is infinitely gentle with my broken heart. And as for fear, what do I have to fear when the Lord of hosts watches over me while I sleep? The psalmist knew this truth. Have you ever read Psalms 91? It's a wonderful one to read before going to sleep. I especially love these verses. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. And that's verses 5, 6, and 14 in the NLT version. Tonight, as you turn out the light, turn your heart to your loving Father. Then rest in the promise that He is keeping watch over you all night long. Lie down and rest, for the Lord is with you. And our first scripture, they all come from the book of Psalms, coincidentally. Um, the first scripture is from Psalms 134. It's a very short chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 and 2. And it says, Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Mm. And I am reading from the King James Bible. Then we're going to go to... The book of Psalms was, we're still in Psalms, cha uh, chapter 3, verse 5, and it says, I lay me down and slept. I waked, for the Lord sustained me. And sustained in this text means supported. I love that. Then we're going to go to Psalms 31 and verse 5. Into thy hand I commit my spirit, that spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Mm. Then we're going to go back to, uh, we're going to go to Psalms 4 and chap chapter 4. I'm sorry, y'all. We're going to go to Psalms chapter 4, verse 8. <clears throat> and it says, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Wow. Wow. Such amazing, amazing scripture. 
And, you know, it is so, it is, God designed our bodies to need rest and sleep. We have to have it. And, you know, we have to have it to be healthy. We have to have it to be, you know, with a sound mind, you know, to be able to comprehend and get through, have the energy to get through the things that is required of us. And isn't it just like that old slew foot to try to get us all day and when that fails, then he attacks us at night when we're trying to sleep. He's such a coward. I can't stand him. <laughs> but God knew all of this. I said it before. There is nothing that you are going to encounter. There's nothing you're going to face that God has not already put provisions in place. He's already thought about it all. Anything that you come up against, God has already put provisions in place for that because he already knew it was going to happen. That's the God we serve. Of course, as usual, I kind of highlighted some things that I loved about this one. And it says, I hope with all of my heart that those moments are peaceful for you. When she's talking about when the lights eventually do go out, that she hopes in those moments that they're peaceful for us. But I know that is not always the case. Is there something that troubles you when the lights go out? And it makes sense, doesn't it? It makes sense that when we're trying to fall asleep, that the lights are out, you know, we've put our phones down, you know, maybe everybody else in the house is asleep and the house is quiet and you, you're just kind of getting into that place where you're about to fall asleep. It makes sense that's when things would start that would come up that would stress us out and worry us because during the day we can kind of be busy and occupied. But when you're laying there trying to go to sleep, you're trying to quieten your mind. You're trying to just get in that state. And it makes sense that that is when the things that we've been able to distract ourselves from comes screeching in, you know, the worries mistakes we've made, fear, heartbreak. I remember particularly when James and I were divorced and I was in this house by myself and I would lay in that bed by myself and just, I was okay during the day. I could function. I could get through. It didn't mean it didn't bother me and it didn't hurt, but there were distractions. But when I was at home alone at night in the bed trying to go to sleep, oh man, did that heartbreak really just, I can't tell you how many nights I cried myself to sleep, but you know, there was not one time that I was crying myself to sleep that God was not there with me. He was always there. And even now, you know, there's things that just life in general can just kind of sneak up on you, some of it, and then some of it's just, just life, you know, and then if you have kids, you worry about them. And so, of course, when you're trying to fall asleep, to get that rest that your body needs, all these things are going to come up on you. But we can pray. I There have been many times that I would be laying in, in bed trying to sleep, and I would just have to start praying. And it's so true that when you start praying... <laughs> <laughs> the devil gonna leave you alone for two reasons. Number one, he wants you to go to sleep so you quit praying. He don't want you to pray. And number two, he's leaving you alone because you're praying. <laughs> you know, so if you get to the point to where you're having trouble falling asleep, start praying, start talking to the Lord. I promise you, you will fall asleep before you realize it because he's gonna leave you alone because he don't want you doing that. But then you're also having that calm and that peace that only comes from talking to the Lord come over you and help you fall asleep. It's amazing what prayer will do. Amazing. Um, she says, those long night hours are transformed when I turn to the presence of my God. I'm going to emphasize my God who loves me. And it's so true just for the reasons that I said, he's there with us. He knows exactly what we're feeling. He knows what we're going through. He knows everything about us because he created us. And he is the only one in 99.9% .9 of the situations we encounter. He's the only one that can really, truly do anything about it. 
you know. Yeah, there's those that little bit that we can do to help ourselves, but the majority of the situations that bring us to this point, only God can do anything about it. And turning to him in those times, it it just brings a peace to your soul because that's what we were designed to do. We were not designed to figure it all out for ourselves. We were not designed to do it all by ourselves, but we were designed and created to need him, to worship him, to want him. So we're doing what we were created to do when things come at us and then we turn to the presence of our God. There I find every mistake I have made and every regret that haunts me swallowed up in the ocean of his endless grace. How true is that? Mm, I love that. My not enough, quote unquote, is no match for God's awesome power. And he is infinitely gentle with my broken heart. I love that. I've never thought of it that way, but he is infinitely gentle with us in every state. He's gentle with our broken hearts. He's gentle with our unknown. He's gentle with our repentance. He's gentle with us because he loves us. That does not mean there's times that he don't have to get a little firmer with us. Me, I'm hard-headed. I have to learn things the hard way a lot of times. I'm working on that. But even then, he's infinitely gentle with me. He knows just how far to push me. He knows just how much I can take. He's so amazing. And I love that line. He is infinitely gentle with my broken heart. So true. So true. And as for fear, what do I have to fear when the Lord of hosts watches over me while I sleep? What do we have to fear? You know, I've said it before. I'll say it again and I will keep saying it. Fear is not of God. Fear is of the devil. And if you are being fearful of something, understand that is not of God. And you have authority through the name of Jesus to rebuke that, to not accept that, to not live in fear. I refuse to live in fear. Now, that does not mean I don't get fearful sometimes. That does not mean I don't worry about things sometimes. But as soon as I realize what's happening, I rebuke it. And I turn my eyes back to God and I don't let that fear be a distraction because a lot of times that's what the fear is. It's a distraction. It is to distract us from God. It is to make us take our eyes off of God. And I just refuse. I refuse to live in fear. I refuse to be ruled by fear. I refuse. And I remember being a, a small child and, you know, living in a house that had creeps and just being a kid. And I wasn't really scared of the dark, but I I slept with my granny my whole entire life. And she would always tell me, if you'll get up and look for the booger, you'll never find the booger. Meaning the bad guy, the whatever it is you're scared of. So if we would hear a weird noise that would scare me, we would get up and look for it. And sure enough, there would be nothing there. It's just old house creaking, you know? And I still remember that, and I still do that to this day. If something happens and I'm here by myself at night or during the day or whatever, and we have to be on, on alert for our surroundings. And, I mean, people are crazy these days, you know. The devil is rampant, and he's using people and things and situations and circumstances. So, I'm not saying that... Um, when I'm at home, that I'm completely 100% safe, that nothing can happen to me. I believe that the Lord is protecting me, but at the same time, I'm going to lock my doors and I'm going to lock my windows and, you know, make precautions. I'm going to use my common sense. But even now, if I hear something, I will get up and go look for it because I remember what she told me. And that just, why would I live in fear when I serve a God my father who watches over me, he did not create me to live in fear, but he created me to trust him. And I'm sorry, you can't have fear and faith. They cancel out each other. You either have, you're either fearful or you're faithful. You know, you either believe in the fear or you have faith. And I choose faith over fear anytime. That does not mean that I don't have to 
give myself these pep talks and remind myself of this, you know, if I get some news or something happens. But I have that reassurance that my God is watching over me. So why should I fear? be fearful? I'm not going to live in fear. Just not. I'm going to use the common sense he gave me. I'm going to trust him and I'm going to believe him. And I'm not going to let the devil rule how I live my life. Just not happening. The psalmist knew this truth. Have you ever read Psalms 91? How many times have I told y'all about 911? James told me, he said I was going through something and he was like, pull out your Bible and call 911. And it was Psalms 91. It's, it's an amazing chapter. It's an amazing chapter. The whole Bible is. I mean, no matter what you're going through, there's something in here that's going to get you through it. It's a living word. It does not change. God does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we can trust him. We can trust him. So tonight, as you turn off, turn out your lights, turn your heart to your loving father. Then rest in the promise that he is keeping watch over you all night long. He don't fall asleep. He don't let his guard down. He don't get distracted. He's watching over you all night long. And you know what? It doesn't stop when you wake up. He watches over you all day long too. Wow. Oh, I love this. And I'm just going to say this again. He is infinitely gentle with our broken hearts and with us in general. I love that. That really, that really sticks out to me. It just touches me. And I pray that this has blessed you as much as it has blessed me. I love y'all. I pray you have an amazing weekend and I will see you in the next one. Bye y'all.